not doing as well in school as you'd like. Blame your brain. No, I'm not saying that you aren't smart enough. I'm saying that how you use your brain may be causing the problem. To talk to us about this is psychiatrist Dr. Daniel Amen. He wrote the book, Change Your Brain, Change Your Grades. Hi, Doc. So happy to be with you. Ask just about anyone what makes the difference between being a C student and being an A student. And most will say it's a matter of smarts or studying more. But you say it's more than that. No, in fact, it has way more to do with the physical functioning of your brain than anybody knows. Over the last 30 years, we've been looking at the brain. And what we discovered is that when your brain works right, you work right. You're a better student. You work better. You do better in relationships. Everything in your life is better. But when your brain doesn't work right for whatever reason, you had a head injury, you had mold in your home, and you were breathing toxic things, you don't eat right, you're not sleeping, then when your brain doesn't work right, nothing in your life, including your schoolwork, is as good as it can be. You list five different types of brains, balanced, persistent, sensitive, cautious, and spontaneous. We haven't the time to explain all of these, so let's just discuss the one you call the spontaneous brain. What do you mean by that? The spontaneous brain often has sleepy frontal lobes. So what does that mean? The prefrontal cortex, or your frontal lobes, is involved in executive function like focus, forethought, judgment, impulse control, organization, planning, empathy, learning from the mistakes you make. And people who have sleepy frontal lobes, they're more spontaneous. They often say the first thing that comes into their mind, which can make them a lot of fun, but it can also get them into a lot of trouble if their impulse control is not as good as it could be. I certainly know people like that. So if you have a spontaneous brain, how can you change it to do better in school? There are a number of ways to strengthen your frontal lobes and be more cautious, more thoughtful. So exercise helps. Having breakfast in the morning because it helps balance blood sugar and actually boost blood flow to the frontal lobes. In your book, you list a number of ways to improve blood flow. For example, drink lots of water, eat colorful vegetables, and avoid caffeine. What's the problem with caffeine? It's just an epidemic of kids using caffeine to try to focus better. They're even vaping uh, caffeine. And caffeine powerfully constricts blood flow to the brain. So even though it gives you that energy and focus boost in the short run, actually it can become addictive. It's a drug and the more you use, the more you need in order to feel its effect. So I'm just not a fan of caffeine. We often hear about the value of exercise, but you specifically say to play a racket sport. Why? Well, there's a study from the United Kingdom that looked at aging and sports. And people who played football and soccer actually lived less long than anyone else. Um, the people who lived the longest played racket sports like tennis, table tennis, badminton, squash. And I think table tennis is actually the world's best brain game. Why? You got to get your eyes, your hands, your feet all to work together and there's a very important part of your brain called the cerebellum. In the back bottom part of your brain, it's involved with coordination and memory and mood. And so doing coordination exercises like table tennis boosts your cerebellum, which then boosts the rest of your brain's ability to learn and think. Thanks, Dr. Amen. You've given us a lot to think about. My joy to be with you.